Okay. <laughs> story one? Not story one, right? You got the hop dog? Or the atlas? Well, that's our home. There's no point going to our home, right? We'll go check out the, uh, the hop dog. The hop dog was like the last warning. Hop dog! We can still turn back. Hop dog, My hop eyes dog, lingered on the sign. Dog. An enormous dog. Like a neon god with limitless power over cheap hot dogs, plastic hamburgers, and watered-down coffee. The cold light called me, but I didn't want to get out of the car. If we went in, we were all going to be pancakes kept together by cold syrup. Marty's worried look shook me out of my reverie. Oh, cluck. Was I talking to myself again? <laughs> I mean, talking to yourself is fine. Talking to yourself when someone else is in the car with you, not cool. <laughs> sure that thing's a dog? I always wondered. The name Hop Dog is quite a giveaway. Don't you think so, Mr. Detective? Sometimes the most natural connections lead us astray. Who said that? A natural born genius? <laughs> yeah, right. Peaceful, isn't it? Because the whole town's probably drunk by now. Maybe that's the only way it can bear itself. Doesn't it remind you of someone? Shut up, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Got you there, old bird. Did this wreck belong to Zip? Well, it's a wreck just like him, so I guess it could. Look at the poor bastard. He's looking okay, Marty. Remember what we saw when we worked at the hive? Wild ones. Don't even remind me. I'm trying to forget that shit every day. It's been even worse since. I guess you heard about the riots. Who hasn't? You know, people are afraid that the Great Fire will happen again, and those hive houses are pretty flammable. I don't speak of the devil, Marty. But oh, to be codex. honest, I, I have no idea how this insect matter can be solved. I do. We just open the ghettos and let the insects live among us like they did for centuries. Your heart is pure gold, buddy. But you know it's not that easy. Clawville isn't what it used to be. Maybe he can't understand what we're saying. Or he just doesn't want to talk to us. Which I can understand, considering how most of the animals treat these poor bastards. Indifference is almost as harmful, Sonny. You think I'm indifferent about the insect issue? I didn't say that, boss. I'm not indifferent. I just think we... Well, we've simply gone too far to even make it right. It's never too late to change, Sonny. I hope you're right. Ah, uh, is that the Chitin Blues? I think so. It has a unique sound to it, that's for sure. I'd like to visit the Hive again, when things lighten up a little. I forgot that, yeah. um... And when they you got more details again. from yeah, looking at people. Right. Like, we did it with the, the, whatever it was, the gazelle in our office, but at the um, police department, I didn't keep looking at them. Uh, is that the chitin blues? Until we exhausted I think it. so. I don't think you get more details, but it's nice to get that little bit of uh, hey, pal. extra stuff. Can you hear me? Is he deaf? I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't understand what I'm saying. Or he doesn't want to. That's also very likely. Ah, uh, poor bug eyes. At least he's playing music. I mean, he's doing something. Most of the destitute take up drinking or drugs. Or worse. Mm. You know about the light. You mean the light the insects believe in? Yeah, their afterlife. If they want to go into the light, they set themselves on fire. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> Maybe it's not a bad way to go. Bug Zappa? That depends on your point of view. Ah, uh, poor bug eyes. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Let's go inside. Wait, there's a warning. Of all that's furry, 
Is this still a thing? The situation's getting even worse, Marty. Have you heard how the young y'all got any of them of the lamps? <laughs> forced to make a living. I have no idea what goes on in the hive, Sonny. I don't think I want to know. But you're still gonna tell me, right? Prostitution is the lesser evil. What's worse is that some folks have to sell their kids when they're still larvae. Wait, what? Why? They pay a hefty sum for each of them downtown. They sell them as gourmet food in the most expensive restaurants. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. We made this city, Marty. Clawville didn't do this to itself. Don't ever forget that. That's gross. Zip is a tricky little son of a bitch. He always has been. But seeing this, I didn't know him to be like this. Me neither, Marty. But maybe this neighborhood changed him. Or the city. Yeah, maybe. This makes the bile rise in my waddle. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the, the bile rise in my waddle. This makes the bile... Ugh, the place is deserted. Poor Zip. You're right. Yeah, the guy's middle name is bad luck. That's for sure. For a handful of feathers and dead flies telling no tales, get a bite of me, baby. My city is on fire. Shadow of a doubt, not all cops are pigs. Hey, Borzo, yeah, it's the chicken police. Inside. Wise work. Well, that's a good question, pal. Well, you know what? I was thinking this. The highlight of my day. Yeah, I can smell it already. How does he make the coffee here so special? Look at that mangy trash panda and tell me, do you really want to know? Um, you're right. <laughs> As always. Sunny. Ah, this will do. Until tomorrow morning, at least. That's right. Someone once said that everything's backwards in Clawville. The beer's always warm and the coffee's always cold. Well, I guess I'm starting to understand what he meant. You still don't eat meat, old man? I'm a rooster, a chicken. Why the hell would I eat meat? I don't mean real meat. I'm not a lunatic. But a meat substitute? There's about 10 different kinds. Have you never tried any of them? Why would I? If I don't eat meat, why would I eat a substitute? Because you can. That's the point. Wild gods, Marty. Stop being such a sheep. Do you fall for those adverts? Substitute isn't meat, Sonny. And if it's tasty, why wouldn't I eat it? I don't care what you eat. But don't be surprised when you lose all your feathers or you try to bite off your own leg one day. Ooh, a nice pancake with hemp seed, chocolate, and black onions? I'd rather have somebody pull my beak off. Oh, Ah, you used to be more daring. Yeah, and my back didn't hurt either. Furry heavens, it's depressing being around you, boss bird. Ooh, maybe a peanut souffle with faux meat. Ugh. Oh, stop it, Marty, before I get sick. <laughs> Ugh, you're just a boring old man. I'd rather be boring than dead. I wouldn't eat here if my life depended on it. I wouldn't eat here. The door didn't look like this last time. Yeah, because last time you tore it out and beat that baboon with it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember now. So that's why Zip remodeled the whole place. He had to. We didn't leave much of it standing. If I didn't know how nice we are, I'd almost hate ourselves. Welcome to the club, partner. <laughs> they put a lot of dialogue in this game. What's that smell? You know, I don't want to know. 
Zip once had Marty do the dishes because he tried to take off without paying. That was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> she trash panda. <laughs> he sure didn't get any younger. Or oh, prettier. You think he's still mad at us? Frankly, Marty, I don't give a damn. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> I love it. You think he might know something about the case? He knows almost everybody in this city. At least he used to once. Let's see if he still does. When I first arrested him, he was barely 14 years old. I was a rookie cop. Who would have thought we'd end up like this? Hello, boys. Now, get the hell out of here while I'm asking nicely. Hey, is that how you greet two old friends? Hey, I'm not joking, Sonny. I got a shotgun under the bar. No, you don't, because if you had, we'd arrest you here and now. If there's still life in you when you're full of buckshot. Ah, it's going well so far. We're just here for a coffee, Zip, okay? Like old times. Nothing's like old times. Haven't you noticed? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it's quite noticeable. Shit. All right. And where'd you blow in from? We haven't been anywhere yet, but we're going somewhere. Everybody's going somewhere, right? Tell me, how much do you know, Zip? That depends. How deep is it? Bottom of the well kind. Goes down around Ibn Wessler. Holy hell, Wessler? You've dipped your wings in deep shit, boys. If you've got anything on him, don't keep it to yourself. We'd be grateful. Grateful? Maybe you're not gonna trash my joint this time, eh? <laughs> you know, Ibn's acting strange nowadays. He always believed that if you want something done, you do it yourself. That's how it was for years anyway. And? But now, he left his real estate, the fish racing clubs, the casinos, and the bars to his right-hand man, Mongrel Mick. And ever since, he's been kind of weird, bottomed out, brooding in the seediest joints of the city. Nobody ever knew him to be like this. Weird, huh? Yeah, weird. Do you think it's about a lady? It's always about a lady. Hmm. Well, there is a woman. I knew it. Bad, not like you think. Is this gonna cost much? Only a favor, like the good old days. Okay, I'm in. Let's finish talking to him first. That Natasha's a mysterious woman. Maybe a we should have asked. Cursed jewel, if you ask me. <laughs> She came out of nowhere two or three years ago and landed on the stage of the millions almost immediately. Is that so? Interesting. Yeah, she's got a fantastic voice. Makes men go crazy. But we all know that's not what's important. Then suddenly, bam! She got the whole club. Just like that. But we know exactly how it was. I can imagine, yeah. Since then, it operates under the name the Czar Club, right? The old click is still clicking, right? Yeah, the club was renamed and remodeled. Everyone knows she was Ibn's lover, but she's not your usual canary. She didn't get involved in Ibn's dirty dealings. Then how exactly does she fit into the picture? Check this. A few months ago, the old rat pulled out of his own businesses and gave control to Mongrel Mick and his mob. Mongrel Mick? Doesn't sound familiar. Mick the Marauder ring a bell? Damn, that little monkey came this far? Uh, I think that little shit took advantage of Ibn not being himself. Which has something to do with this Natasha, right? That's my guess. Thanks for this straight dope, Zip. We owe you one. One? You owe me the price of a new coffee shop, <laughs> remember? Okay, okay. Whatever you need. Just call us. I cluck and will. Thanks, pal. Hey, I'm not your pal, Marty. Ask him stuff. Have you ever been to that place? Of course, a hundred times. Everyone who matters in this city's been there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but then, it had a different name and a different owner. Business affairs, right? Yeah, that was the dark era, Sonny. I don't want to talk about it. Roger that. Hop dog. I've got to say, you've revamped the joint pretty well. 
Yeah, after you trashed it, I had to. Look, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Zip. That ocelot and his gorilla. Baboon, not gorilla. Whatever. Sonny, <clears throat> what's your beak? So you owe me one until about the end of time. But I'd settle for you washing up here for a few years after retirement, Sonny. Mind your tongue, furball. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ibn's gone insane. Love will kill you in the end, they say. Seems like everyone's in a poetic mood today. You're one to talk, by the way. Huh? Why? So, about that woman. Is she really that dangerous? <laughs> what woman is it, then? Eh? No, Zip. I mean, really dangerous. She's got the most influential gangster of the city wrapped around her finger. She calls him her little friend. I think so, exploits, yeah. How dangerous Bees. do you think she is? How you doing, buddy? You didn't get any younger, pal. You're telling me? You look like you haven't had a good night's sleep since forever. To be honest, I've never had a good night's sleep in my life. <laughs> you will when the big sleep comes. And what are your plans? Dying behind the bar? Of course. You got a better idea? A couple. Nice, man. Yeah. But somehow this suits Getting you. Get ready for a big weekend? You know what? Your mother's a goat. You sure talk a lot. And maybe the past is haunting me. Once a rat, always a rat, man. Oh, come on, Zippy. Don't be so hard on yourself. You got out in time. And you've been living an honest, ordinary life since then. <laughs> your you? father smells like elderberries. Yeah, right. I fought How in your general direction. I, eh? It's more than what many others get, believe me. What's this no insects allowed shit? You're not like that. What do you think? If I let one in, all of them will follow. And then I can forget my regular clientele for good. What clientele? There's no one here. That's it. Would you take even that away from me? Oh, only for you, Beast. Only for you. What's this no insect allowed? Sh Looks like we got everything from here. <clears throat> we got another. I thought we got another place. Yeah, but they're a bit racist. They won't let the insects in. Go to the Zar Club, maybe. I don't think there's any reason to take to go back home. Midnight had passed, and the intoxicated madness kicked in. We could only crawl along Shalva District's main streets toward downtown. I love The snacks. city's heart beat differently. Ancient buildings were defaced by neon signs and billboards. Potato like chips half drunk and, uh, lovers on a fine leather sofa. Great old houses neighbored by garish modern blocks. A place that makes the head hurt. The Tsar's huge neon sign was visible for miles. A blazing red sign advertised tonight's main attraction, the amazing Natasha. Uh, cops were never welcomed at places like this. They hoped we were too late for the show. We had to be inconspicuous, but it was never easy with this bird mountain by my side. Is that our rabbit friend? Ah, so this is the famous Czar Club. More like infamous, Marty. It's not for our kind, that's for sure. And I don't mean that they don't like foul here. Well, at least we don't have to be afraid that they see you as a detective, boss bird. Very funny, <laughs> Marty. So what are we gonna do now? The we detective find game. Natasha, the broad Please. who sent me the message, remember? But first, we need to get into the club. And Marty, please. Don't monkey this up. 
<gasps> Excuse me? On behalf of the well-respected and noble primate community of Clawville? Cut the crap, Marty. Let's focus on what we're here for, okay? As you say, boss bird. Stalk lady, Lewis. Poster, poster. Ah, you know, seeing this, I can't wait for the show. The girls? New Year's Eve's once a year, right? And we're not on duty. Have I asked how Laura's doing? Whoa, hey, I, <laughs> I was just kidding, okay? My relationship with Laura is unwavering, like the rhino beauty on this picture. Interesting taste you've got. Feathers, scales, or dermal armor, a lady's a lady, my friend. Thank the wild gods for self-sacrificing <laughs> gentlemen like you. What the crap? My city is on fire. This is it. It was on the flyer from Deborah. Maybe we'll get to hear it, if we're unlucky. From none other than our secret employer, Natasha Katsenko. Ah, a job with benefits, huh? <sighs> Don't be tasteless. Oh, I get it now. The title. Do you think it's about the Great Fire of Clawville? Did you ever think of being a detective? <laughs> ah, very funny. <laughs> My city is on fire. This is it. Huh, I like this. Why is that? I don't know. Because it's moving, I guess. You're a simple bird, aren't you? I was just yes, thinking, Marty's simple. I am. A poor simuave. Oh, bless you. It means, and yet it moves, bird brain. An old wolf named Galileo said that. Oh, I see. And what did he mean by that? Eh, don't know. I think there was something wrong with his stomach. Ouch. <sighs> A poor simuave. One day, neon signs will cover the whole world, I'm telling you. You read that in some kind of science fiction book? No, it's just what I think. Oh, so you have your own thoughts now. <laughs> oh, the world's man. really moving <laughs> forward. Cluck off, Sonny. And no wonder he shot him. The Czar Club. I'm not going to forget this buzzing red neon light anytime soon. Do you remember when the Clawville Chronicle was a really high quality newspaper? You mean when they wrote something about us daily? Yeah. What exactly happened to them? Well, they got bored with us, Marty. And to be honest, so did I. But still, here we are working together again. Funny, huh? Yeah, hilarious. Tonight? Maybe we'll be on the front page once again. Oh, God forbid. Tonight? Maybe we'll be on the front page Whoa, look at that. Isn't that the new... It is, Marty. A brand new 942 Silver Hawk. Haven't seen such beauty since I left Averia. Of all that's furry. Whose is it? Maybe it's Ibn Wessler's. I guess he's no paper tiger. Yeah, he sounds like a fellow who drives around in one of these. Lucky bastard. What a beautiful car. A work of art. Seeing it and thinking about my little rusty cupboard <laughs> breaks my heart. Ah, uh, don't torture yourself, Sonny. Only way we're ever gonna drive one of them is if we sign up for the mob. <laughs> Maybe it would be worth it. I think we'd be great gangsters. In another life. <laughs> Beautiful car indeed. Eh, not much else to say. Yep. As you say, boss. Beautiful car indeed. Why are they chickens? Oh, because the title of the game is the chicken police. <clears throat> hey, that's your old friend, right? Wait, what was his name? Uh, Lawrence? Lamar? No, Liam. Lewis. Yes, it's him. To be honest, Sonny, I always thought that guy's not all there in the head. Nobody's perfectly sane in Clawville, Marty. But if not for this old rabbit, I wouldn't be here today. I'll never forget that. Should I thank him for that? Or kill him for it? You're reading my mind, boss. 
Is Lucas really such a big fan? <laughs> Lucas. Lewis. And yes, he's got the whole Chicken Police book series. Damn his taste. Is Lucas really such a big fan? Sonny, my dear friend. Hi, Lewis. This is my partner. But I'm sure you already know. You have no idea how happy I am to meet you, Mr. Marty. I'm a big admirer of your work. Pleasure's all mine, Lawrence. Lawrence? <clears throat> Anyways, so, the legendary chicken police back together? <laughs> Isn't it amazing news? <laughs> Don't ruffle my feathers, Lewis. Those days are long gone. We're just here for the entertainment. Or something like that. I see. Well, that's a shame. See you inside? I have something to do, my f f f f f pal. But I'll try to make it for the main event. Okay, then. Catch you later, pal. That dialogue's a little painful. Let's not bother him again. Yes, sir. Really? Let's not oh, bother. Stalk lady. Honestly, I think these types of women only see faceless tuxedos, cufflinks, and wallets. And in the mirror, they're just brooches, necklaces, and earrings. Don't be so radical, Marty. They're women. They <laughs> live by different rules. Hmm. That was kind of deep. It's not. Just bullshit. There's more where that came from. <laughs> Ooh, teach me, master. When you're old and wise like me, you'll realize none of it is worth a damn thing. Wait, that was deep again, right? Maybe it was, Marty. Maybe it was. <laughs> Amazing. Let's not bother her. Okay, boss. Yeah, bouncer. Jeez, look at that guy. That's not a guy. That's a demon. Straight from the dog-eared pages of a cheap detective novel. Yeah, I bet his name's Bill. Nah, he's definitely a Bob. Damn it, Bob. for Bill? Okay, I'm in. Oh, man. Jeez, look at that guy. That's not a guy. Howdy, pal. Gentlemen, how can I help you on this wonderful chilly night? We're expected in the VIP lounge. My apologies, but I don't remember ever seeing you gentlemen here before. May I ask? Hey, Dungy, the dialogue's right great, there, isn't it? Big guy. I get it. Yeah, I know exactly how this works. So what do you have to do to get in? Nothing's easier, sir. Are you on the list? The list? Yeah. I, uh, uh... Oh, don't tell me you forgot. I'm afraid I did, Marty. Sorry, big guy, but I'm pretty sure we're not on the list tonight. That's a shame. I'm really sorry, sirs. In that case, you can't come in. Yeah, right. Uh, thanks. My pleasure, gentlemen. Okay. Talk to him some... Oh, let's ask him some things. Look, I really don't want any trouble, but... It is even more inconvenient for me, sir, but... This place doesn't like, uh, coppers. Forgive this line. I can't let just anybody in, and there are some I'm strictly forbidden to. Please, you have to understand. Listen here, you cow. Do you have any idea who we are? You ever read the papers? Of course I know who you are, sir. I get the news and more, and I must admit it's an honor to meet you in person, Mr. Santino Featherland, and... Mr. Marty Machikin. The Bell of the Pantheres is one of my favorite books. Oh my god, not the books again. <laughs> so it would be terribly inconvenient for me if I had to use force on you, gentlemen. What, what did you just say? Relax, Marty. This guy has chicks like you for breakfast. Uh, thanks for the information, pal. Uh, have a nice night. Thank you for understanding, gentlemen. And forgive me for my austere composition. No problem, Shakespeare. Say, big guy, you know Mr. Lewis Hayworth? But of course. Mr. Hayworth is an impeccable gentleman. And also a frequent visitor of the club. Is that so? Good to know. And? 
I'm afraid that is all, monsieur. What can you tell me about the first lady of the place, big guy? Uh, you mean Miss Natasha Katsenko, sir? You're right on point, pal. Nothing you don't know already, sir. Mm. Just try me. Well, she owns the place. And, uh, that's it? Well, Maybe Lewis uh, can get us in. <clears throat> unbelievable. Pardon, monsieur, but I'm not permitted to say anything more. Just one more thing. Uh, this list of yours, uh, where should we sign up again? <laughs> I'm afraid if you don't know, it's not my place to tell you, sir. Uh, Excusez-moi, uh, the regulations, you know. You hear that, Sonny? I do, Marty. I do. I'm gonna lose my crest from this guy. Just wait. Just don't no, get too excited, Marty. Not tonight. Anyway, uh, thanks, pal. Yes, gentlemen. Hey, big guy. Uh, what's your name again? My name is Archibald, sir. Archibald Conway. Well, that's nice. not Bob. Excuse me, monsieur. Archib... what? No way. That's not even a real name. <laughs> Marty. Sorry to disappoint you, sir, but uh, my name is Archibald Conway, without any doubt. Blackjack Conway to my friends. Well, thanks, Blackjack. It was a pleasure. We'll be on our way now. Say, big guy, is this your job? To stand in front of the club and keep out decent fellows like us all night? Not entirely, monsieur. My employer has many other kinds of jobs for me. He is quite creative in this field, I must say. Like? Yeah, who gets like the five bucks? What? Exactly. Sorry, monsieur. I'm not, uh... Permitted to say anything more about the matter. Regulations, yeah, I know. Uh, this bullshit just gave me a headache. So sorry to hear that, sir. Jeez, look. That's not a guy. Uh, okay. Lewis, can you let us into the club? Look, Lewis. That bouncer over there. Well, yes. He is a bit intimidating, but his manners are impeccable. Am I right? Yes, indeed. But it seems tonight we're not on his list. Oh. I see. <clears throat> Oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> You'd like to go in, but he won't let you. Yeah, something like that. No, 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 no problem at all. Come with me. I'll t t t t talk to him. Much obliged, pal. Yeah, thanks, Bunny. Excuse me. Ah, oh, jeez, what the hell's wrong with you, Marty? What? Did I say something wrong? Marty. Marty. Sir, how'd you do? Everything's fine, Mr. Aworth. Good. <clears throat> uh, look, this noble pair of p p pigeons are my friends. They're on the list, okay? Merci la mon, sir. And as for you, <clears throat> you owe me one, g g gentlemen. Thank you, pal. <laughs> it was my p p pleasure to help you, as always. This our club welcomes you, gentlemen. Thanks, buddy. Oh, we'll go inside the then. The jazz overwhelmed us. There was no band in sight, yet the music seeped from the walls like years of cigarette smoke and the smell of spilt whiskey. Behind the bar, rows of fancy bottles reflected the harmonious voices of pretty dames and the clinking of crystal glass. It was the kind of place that makes you drunk even if you've never had a sip. A dangerous place for someone. Yeah, cool. This is chicken place. No matter how alien I felt. Like a detective it story, Glenn. Like coming home. Lots Welcome of dialogue. to the Tsar. <laughs> Here we are. Mother of... I take you to the nicest places, eh, sweetheart? <laughs> oh, does it mean you're buying, honey? Don't even think about it. Oh, men these days. So, we're here to find a dame called Natasha. I have a hunch she won't be hard to find. Let's mingle and try to avoid suspicion. Just like always. No, Marty, not like always. This time it's for real. Oh, 
Animal Farm Noir? Yeah. Is Animal Farm a detective game? Maybe. Henchman posters. Huh. Another lupus movie. Jeez. Is there yeah, Sonny's leather jacket's pretty cool, hey? Trying to sell with this guy. Whoa, don't be rude, Sonny. Lupus is a timeless genius. Have you seen Predator City? God, I'm still getting chicken bumps. But wait, who's that next to him? Chicken Cassandra bumps. Cassandra Ruby Fay. <laughs> nah, never heard of her. Cassandra Ruby Fay. Oh, gods, even her name makes me go weak in the knees. Watch your blood pressure, pal. Don't mind me. Just women and guns are my only weakness. <laughs> no shit. Ah, oh, remember the name, Marty. Cassandra Ruby Fay. Marty, shut up. You think this is one of those movies where the femme fatale gets everything in the end and the poor detective's left stranded? Yep, just like life. You're old, Sonny. I mean, experienced. Have you ever met a woman like that in real life? Who floors you with a glass and leaves only heartbreak? Well, actually... Oh, but I, I, I didn't mean to... Uh, I'm sorry, Sonny. You're old, Sonny. I mean... <laughs> He's gonna Google them, yeah. He's gonna take the filter Ooh, off first. I've seen this. Hicks Poodle plays a private eye, hired to look for a woman, then gets into some kind of blackmail thing that's connected to the first case, and... Hey, uh, Marty? <laughs> what, yeah? I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's a classic. And kind of reminds me of the situation we're in right now. How so? I don't know. A mysterious case, a mysterious woman, strange threats, some off-duty investigation. So? Like, think about it. What if... What if we're in a movie? And this whole mess is just fiction. Marty, I think you're having a nervous breakdown. It's a classic. And kind of... Okay, they've all had two. Let's go with this one with two. Oh, I know this fodder guy. He was kind of good in Death of the Horse. <laughs> You've seen every cluckin' movie. You know... Laura and I go to the movies a lot. When was the last time you went? Exactly 12 years ago. Oh, you remember that precisely? Let me guess. Molly? Yep, our very first date. I see. What did you watch? I don't remember. I just remember her. And nothing else. You're a clucking poet. I mean it. <laughs> what weird titles these have. All right, henchman. This guy is certainly not a gangster henchman. Of course he's not. Hey, Marty, I bet you wouldn't dare to go up to him and ask if he hasn't seen your fur coat. What? Why? I'm mad, yeah, but not suicidal. Yeah. Are you chicken or what? Are you chicken? Piss off, old bird. Nah, chicken shit. <laughs> Fox fella, stage, big buck, waitress, uh, some dude we don't know, bartender, fancy whiskey. This dude's like right up in her face, right? Hey, there's Philmar. Who? Oh yes, Philmar, because that's what he calls Phil himself, Mar. right? You know him well? We had some serious. Sounds Oops. good. Like the blurb of some cheap pulp fiction book. Yeah, it was the exact opposite. But the old bird's worth saying hi to. The old hawk looks like shit if you ask me. Just like looking into the mirror. The old hawk looks like shit. Well, well, if it isn't the great detective, Marlowe. Blow me, Sonny. You know I don't use that name anymore. Okay. Mr. Dumbass alias Phil Marlowe. So says someone who tried to go undercover with the Feather Pillow Mafia is a turkey. 
right, Mr. Turk Cayman? Hey, that was a long time ago. I was young. And I stick to my principles and my stupidity. Phil Marlowe and that's that. Don't rile me up, you old fart. Okay, okay, fair enough. Sorry, I'm a little clapped tonight. Uh, I know the feeling, pal. By the way, what are you two doing here? You stick out a bit. Are you here for a good old-fashioned beating? We stick out? Man, you look terrible. Like someone who sat on an electric pole. Don't even ask. I feel exactly like that. You want a case? Five feet tall, half of that legs, angelic voice, demonic eyes, just the usual. Oh, boy. And you? Something like that. Just don't know the exact numbers yet. A dame named Natasha. She called us here. If I'm not mistaken, the joint is hers. Yeah, she owns the joint, amongst others. Well, good luck, guys. That broad has a reputation. She's not the kind to toy with, if you know what I mean. Any useful information? For free? Stop clucking around, Philmar. All right, but just because of the old days. Look for me after you've talked to her. You wouldn't understand what I have to say about her before then. Don't leave unless you're thrown out, in which case, you know the drill. We don't know each other, I'll deny you in a blink. Good to see you too, old pal. We'll be back. Oh, hang on. We could have talked to more people, though. That was, um, Ibsen, was it? Ibn, Ibn Wessner? The old hawk looks like shit, if you ask me. Just like looking into the mirror. Do you have more to say yet? Uh, just one more thing, Philmar. <laughs> I see you haven't changed a bit. Do you think we're walking into a trap? You always had good instincts. You know, I couldn't figure out this Natasha woman. Even when I worked for her. Then the trouble is bigger than I thought. Just take care of yourselves. And don't leave your guns out of reach. Oh, that's never happened. Yeah, this crazy cock even sleeps with his. You're welcome to the club, Brother Bird. Take care, Phil. You too, old fart. <laughs> hey, bartender, why the long face? Take care, Phil. You too. All right. Two whiskeys, kid, and no horsing around. I've never heard that one before. Uh, Sonny, you gotta drive, you know? Yeah, you're right, Marty. Hey, long face. <laughs> Give me a glass of tap water, too, okay? Yes, sir. Coming right up. That wasn't exactly what I meant. As I recall, you're always bragging about hiding your shotgun in your coat so well, no one can see it. Sure. Maybe I have it with me now. <sighs> what? Well, do you see that bottle, Marty? That's a 28-year-old Golden Eagle whiskey. Of all the furry gods, you're right! And they've just left it on the bar. Someone ordered it, got so drunk he forgot all about it. So? So we're confiscating it as evidence. <laughs> yeah, well, more like stealing it. But if it's easier for you... Ah, you're twisted, pal. But to be honest... I've no objections. Hmm. Look, uh, Sonny, I know it's not my place, but Laura's father went to that guy when his, you know, problems uh, had gone too far. You're treading on thin ice, Mark. It's going to achieve him for no, stealing just, the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Look, fellas at the station are talking, you know? All kinds of things. Moses, Plato, Bosco, and the others. Talking, eh? About what? About why Blood Boil took my badge? About what an untrustworthy alcoholic wreck I am? Look, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. Good. And let it stay that way. At least we're cracking this one together, yeah? Sure, Marty. Tell me, hey Breath, have you oh, seen indeed. Natasha tonight? <clears throat> Not yet, sir, but she's coming on soon. Well, can you tell me anything about Mr. Ibn Wessler? Sir, I... 
I don't want to. What about, let's see, five dollars maybe? But sir, you haven't even paid for your drinks yet. Yeah, yeah, stop riding on the details, Big Nose. You do your job and we'll do ours, okay? I mean, we're not here for work, of course. We're just here to relax. Oh, yeah, exactly. Just a little fun. Of course, gentlemen. <laughs> gentlemen, your drinks. Yeah, uh, sorry, but we have to run. Uh, thanks anyway, Bojack. Ugh, my name is not Bojack. Yeah, I tip you, pal, but... I don't have any change, so... Sure, sir. The Tsar welcomes you back anytime. Sounds good, Bojack. <laughs> Anything else, sirs? Uh, no thanks, Mr. Ed. Keep up the good work. Oh, <laughs> okay, these guys are jerks. <laughs> she has pretty long legs. I mean, pretty and long legs for a squirrel, but I don't want to be prejudiced. We're not here to stare at pretty squirrels. We're here to investigate, remember? Uh, that girl is looking at me. She's just looking at anyone whose glass is empty, Marty. That's all. Uh, no, 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 Sonny. She was staring at me, like, hard. Now, I saw it. Marty, you're imagining things. Oh. Wait a second. You see that, right? She's looking right at us with those big, black, weird squirrel eyes. Okay, Marty, don't panic. And just look elsewhere and walk away slowly. Creepy little squirrel girl. Creepy little squirrel girl. <laughs> <clears throat> That's a sound bite. Creepy little squirrel girl. All right, we got the um, big buck or the foxy fella. Go to Fox. A fox is a wolf who sends flowers. What? Oh, nothing. I read it somewhere. Fascinating. I didn't know you could read. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Very funny. Remember that old case with the fox and the raven? How could I even forget? God, absurd, right? All that bloodshed for a piece of cheese. Yeah. Hunger can bring out the monster in animals, right? And the wildest and most primordial instincts, no matter how civilized they seem. As you say, Marty. Remember that other case with the turtle and the rabbit fella? Oh, gosh, Marty, where do you dig these out? Uh, my mind is a bottomless pit, my friend. Was the rabbit a runner? And that turtle yeah. was what, his buddy or his dealer, actually. Ah, yeah. You're right. Twitch alert. We Creepy found the rabbit squirrel near the girl. girl with a missing leg. Brutal stuff. Two <clears throat> missing legs, actually. But yeah. What happened with the turtle in the end? It's a little bit blurry. Your bottomless pit of a mind is a dark and sad little place. The turtle thought he would run faster if he ate the legs of the rabbit. You know what? This city's seriously fucked up. It is, Marty. <laughs> Remember that other case <clears throat> with the... So, where the hell is Natasha? Well, let's ask that stud over there with those nice gals. Mm, that guy looks way too horny for my taste. Oh, man, your sense of humor is <laughs> bad as ever. You just need to get used to it again. <clears throat> what if... Ah, uh... oh, this is the life, huh? What's this guy do? Real estate? Mob accountant? Or is he a movie star? He looks like a coat hanger to me. Uh, that was actually worse than the previous <laughs> Crobo, so you can ban him. <laughs> <I> try. <laughs> ah, this is the life, huh? That's everything. I was hoping to have missed the main event. You're a rusty old cock, that's why. <laughs> so says the little butt jam. But what? That's not even a word. It is now, all because of you. You should feel honored, butt jam. 
Uh, you know, Sonny, sometimes you're like an evil little child. What is it, Butt Jam? <laughs> Nothing, old fart. <laughs> what is it, Butt Jam? <clears throat> All right. How are we supposed to get the main event to happen? Let's ask this guy. Wait. <clears throat> there we go. Ibn and Olivia. That woman with Ibn. I think I know her from somewhere. Maybe in your dreams, pal. <laughs> and it probably is poop, Jeez, yeah. Please, just spare me the dirty details. Uh, the memories are returning. Gee. Isn't that. Yes, it is. The great Ibn Wessler in the flesh. So much for our incognito. You think he noticed us? Only if he's not entirely blind. Uh, great. Just try to act normal. As much as you can. Yep, that's him. The big rat in the flesh. Well, it looks like this unpleasant conversation can't be avoided. Just try to act normal. Just act nonchalant, my friend. No, it can't be. What now? Is that Olivia? No, Marty. Hey, uh, Olivia. Are you talking to me? It's me, Marty McChicken. This raven crow lady oh, just looks God. weird. What a pleasant surprise. The rooster coppers in person. Chicken police. Hey, naughty pine. But yeah, Mr. Wessler, you could say so. The name's... Sunny Featherland, of course, of course. Chicken police. Your partner is... Uh, he is... Uh, Marty McChicken, sir. I, I just introduced myself to your lady companion seconds ago. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to see you. Hello, boys. So, to what do we owe this pleasure, gentlemen? Yeah, so, um, we, we were, um, just in the neighborhood, and... Cut the crap, Marty. All right, we're here for your sweetheart, Natasha. Oh, I see. No big deal. Just a blackmail thing. You know, horrifying threats written on the wall with blood red paint. The usual stuff. You must be familiar with this kind of thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, indeed. It's a uh, nasty business. But I didn't know Natasha hired a detective because of this simple matter. But to be honest, I understand. I would have taken matters into my <laughs> own hands, you see. But. I'm kind of busy. Mr. Wessler had a meeting with Attorney General Hamtaro yesterday, so he's rather tired. If you would excuse us. Oh, dear Olivia, it's okay. These gentlemen are just doing their job, right? And if I've heard correctly, they're notoriously thorough. Hey, Severo, you've arrived. So, how can I help you? We've got a few questions, if you don't mind. I'm at your service. Nice bunker you got here. Well, thank you, but it's not mine. Not anymore. But I'm sure you already know that. <sighs> Listen, detective. If you want to know something, please ask straight, huh? Wasn't right, one of the Mr. contract Wessler, details about letting him in know. A bit more ah, <laughs> I'm not as exciting as people tend to believe. I grew up in a poor family of many siblings. I'm the only one still alive, unfortunately. My career started with a shoe store, and now, here I am. I wouldn't call that an average life. Shoe store owner to oh, mob dude. boss. <laughs> How dare you speak to Mr. Wessler like that? Leave it, Olivia, dear. It's just provocation. I'm sorry if I offended you, Mr. Wessler. Shall we talk about something else? Man, you're having someone... Mm. Buzz your building door just to be let in. Everybody knows Mr. Hayworth. He's an antique piece of furniture in this city, so to speak. Only a bit worn out. It's not my fault that he's so much in debt, detective, but the name of his family still rings quite loud in Clawville. Is that still worth anything? 
The name is just their name, of course. But the man behind the name is another matter, Mr. Fiddleman. You're a pragmatic rat. Thank you. Look, detective. If you want to know something, just ask. All right, Mr. Wessler. Has your assistant been working for you long? Are you talking about me? Yes, I'm talking about you, ma'am. Let me answer your question, then. I've been in Mr. Wessler's employment for six months. Why do you ask? Oh, just uh, routine questioning, you know. Most of them aren't good for anything. Just killing time. It sounded rude <laughs> to me. Yeah, please forgive a detective. Olivia's a real firecracker. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, we've got an interrogate option. Don't be shy, detective. Ask me anything. All right, Mr. Wessler. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Wessler is a tricky guy. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about him, so I have to be cunning. I can't just pin him against a wall. Yet. Alright. How did you feel when you heard about the blackmail? Honestly, I found it ridiculous. And now? Now I'm kind of interested. But I wouldn't call it blackmail yet. They're just empty threats. There were no demands. Good point. Thank you. Are we done? No, not quite. I'm sorry to hear that. Why didn't you just call the police? Huh? Why? What would have been the use of that? A few messages aren't enough for a case. You should know that. Harassment makes for a case. So do threats. Who were you trying to convince, Sonny? Huh? They would have laughed in my face. Anyway, you know, the police station. Once I set foot in there, nah, I'm not coming out again. Your lawyers are too good for that, Eben. Yeah. I guess you're right, chicken. Yeah. Yeah, all I know is a good guy. Why would anyone have reason to blackmail your girlfriend? I don't know. Uh, maybe because she's my girlfriend? You think that's enough? It's plenty enough. Good point. Oh. Are you finally getting to a point? Or do you really want to dig around in my private life? Because, uh, people who do that end up in the alley, if you catch my drift. Very much so, Mr. Wessler. Wessler is tougher than I thought, and he's secretive. It's time to gently beat around the bush. Were there any similar <clears throat> incidents in Natasha's past? I mean, threats, blackmail, enemies, or insane fans. Psychopath pianists, perhaps. Eh, I don't know about enemies, but she's a celebrity. A star shining bright in Clawville's night sky. Do you understand? She gets endless fan mail. It could be anybody. Eh, I wouldn't overreact. Natasha doesn't feel that way. I've noticed. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Do you think one of her fans is the culprit? Someone who can't take rejection, maybe? Why not? It's quite common. It's a typical motive, indeed. Any ideas who it could be? Yeah. Attorney General Hantaro is obsessed with Natasha. But he's, uh, more like the kiss on the hand, flowers bowie type. Throwing bricks through the window is not his style. I can't think of anybody else. Or rather, I can think of everybody else. About <laughs> half the city, actually. I get it. The mob boss and the pussycat, eh? How did you even meet? Huh? 
Are you trying to piss me off, Corpora, so I accidentally let some big secret slip out? Yes. Huh? A simple answer would work. <sighs> you know, Natasha, she's both connoisseur and muse. Uh, uh, so, uh, how was it? Uh, uh, when was it exactly? You don't remember. That's strange. Ah, yeah. The millions, of course. It was like another lifetime. It happened right here. Only this place was called the Millions back then. She was a dancer. Behind the scenes, I arranged opportunities for her on the big stage. Yeah, maybe she still doesn't know it was me. Then one day, I invited her for a drink with a promise that if she was willing to meet me, I'd buy the place for her. I guess she was willing. The next day, she had the club in her name. Well, that is romantic. <laughs> eh, there are many kinds of romance, Birdman. There's cheap and there's expensive. You get what you can afford. Well, I guess we'll pick this one. Do you live in the same house as Natasha? Oh, you're really something. Natasha's a free woman, but mostly, yeah, at my place in Goldtown. But she has her own kind of a weekend house. Mm. How often does she use the weekend house? Yeah, every other weekend, roughly. I see. That's very important information. Oh, is it now? Yeah, <clears throat> if you say so. So Natasha feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. Yeah, I know what you're getting at. But I'm 100% sure of her loyalty. She's gone out very rarely since this started, and mostly in my company. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if you do, but uh, in our social circles, banquets and dinners are frequent. Hmm, illegal gambling nights. <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Natasha <laughs> is crazy by the roulette wheel. Always putting it all on the red, right? Yeah, you're a real rotten bastard, Sonny. Although, yeah, always on the red. Yeah, right. So, can we meet your lady? Mm, I don't see why not. But first, please, listen to her sing. She's on soon. There we go. Oh, it's just... Living legend, this guy. Two for two. <clears throat> uh... Thank you for your time. We'll be seeing you. I have no doubt about that, unfortunately. Hey, uh, That's what everyone you says. Should, uh, grab a coffee or something, Olivia. You know, for old time's sake. Pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. Goodbye. Oh. Please take you a seat. Watch The show's like gonna Columbo. start soon. That was, um, unique. Oh, that is cute. 
Nobody has ever given me such a unique compliment before. Forgive me, my name is Santino Featherland. I thought so. You look more or less like I imagined. More or less? Sometimes less is more, Mr. Featherland. Ahem. You were amazing, dear. As always. Could you be my little furball and fetch me a cocktail? But of course. Ibn will be back soon. We'll have a few minutes to talk. Then he'll end the conversation and throw you both out. <laughs> With all due respect, ma'am, we're not that easy to get rid of. Doesn't matter who's trying, believe me. <sighs> Doesn't matter, he'll do it. That's why I'm telling you. I don't want a scene. <laughs> My room's upstairs. Meet me there in 20 minutes. Come alone, Sonny. You'd be too conspicuous otherwise. Hey, I understand. You know, they call him Target Marty at the station. I don't have time, Mr. Featherland. Uh, sure thing, Natasha. I'll come to your room. Three knocks, a short pause, then another three. I'll be waiting. Go, before he comes back. I knew she was trouble the first time I saw her. She wore danger like a perfume. It was simply part of her being, and it attracted me, like light attracts the moth people. I wanted to be the microphone as she whispers her melodies, or the pillow she rests her feet on while reading some cheap romance. I wanted to be her nightdress, barely touching, barely covering her marble skin. But I was a cop. And a lifetime wouldn't be enough to rid myself of what a woman like her hides under her makeup. Keep your distance, Sonny. Just keep your distance. This dude's messed up. <laughs> He's like out there messed up. The red robed lady. Okay, we had a flashback. <clears throat> Why does she have human hands? Gee, that is a... Uh, she does. ...unique picture. And kind of... ...daring. I admit I've never seen anything... <laughs> ...quite like it before. Yes, I admit it's a little daring. I keep it. It evokes good memories. A precious old friend of mine. A most wonderful artist. He's got an eye, that's for sure, considering his model. Was that supposed to be some kind of compliment? I don't know. I don't compliment often. Not on purpose, anyway. Oh, you're funny. This woman's aware of her charm, and she knows how to use it. A rare and dangerous combination. <laughs> Chicken police story, hey? I bet you spend a lot of your time staring into the mirror. Do you even recognize yourself? Maybe you were trying to be rude, but, you know, that's a very good question. I was just trying to be rude. Oh, really? Well... Then I'm sorry. Don't mention it. So this is where the magic happens, right? The big transformation. Every woman needs a little magic. And every man needs some illusion. You're right there, Angel. So this is where the magic happens. Is that it? You talk now? You got a beautiful place here, Natasha. A peaceful little island on the ocean of madness with very classy furniture. Ibn likes me surrounded by elegant things, you know? You're an elegant thing yourself, sweetheart. 
Oh, that's charming. Thank you, detective. Light is the brother of darkness. More like its lover, don't you think? Anyway, I thought I hired a detective, not a poet. I'm not a poet, Natasha. Just a fool. Oh, what an act. <laughs> yeah. Light okay. is the... <clears throat> yeah. This woman's aware of her charm. How do you like your bourbon, Mr. Featherland? In a glass. But thanks, I had a couple before <laughs> I came. I feel like this may be In a, a glass. long uh. I hope it doesn't bother you if I have one myself. I prefer the bourbon in my mouth. If women don't drink in my company, you know. Oh, you are a funny guy. So I've been told. Anyway, uh, lovely room. Yes. Look, Mr. Featherland. It's sunny. Saves us a lot of time. Okay, sunny. So, why am I here? You know, men tend to babble in my presence. It must be exhausting. It is. But you're not the type to beat around the bush. Is it too banal if I tell you it's an occupational hazard? Terribly. So can I start the unpleasant questions? I've asked you here so you can do what you do best. Really? I thought you asked because you wanted me to investigate for you. But if you'd rather be drinking... Oh, you do have a sense of humor. How reassuring. Only if I'm a bit hungover. That's usually quite common. Oh, please <laughs> drop the act about being the alcoholic, heartbroken ex-cop, Sonny. It would undoubtedly suit you, but um, I've seen you scanning my room. From the second you set foot in here, yep. you started working, and everything I say gets sorted in your brain. Am I right? Yes, you are. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but yeah, it's something like that. Well then, Sonny, come at me. Oh, well, that's something I don't hear often. With pleasure. Huh. Seriously, how did you find me? Not even my boss knows where I live. Although I didn't include oh, okay, so terrible, in my man. little private I hope you feel mission, better soon, some of his resources Take it easy, were still available to me. Yeah, let me guess. I believe you only got rid of that at the station that. working for him. Someone? You're so cute when you're playing naive. No. Have you ever had dealings with the police? Not in this city. And otherwise? Does it really matter, Mr. Featherland? Maybe it does. More than a little. I'm afraid you'll have to unravel that thread yourself. But you will find nothing but a dead end. Okay. <clears throat> Natasha is a confident Let's go for woman. living legend. I can exploit that. But I must be careful. Every part of her oozes danger. Uh, okay, well, I think we're going to get this one right. That was a remarkable performance. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Do you perform here frequently? You're also the owner, if I'm not mistaken. Sadly, I don't have the time. But the stage still calls my name. And I perform just a few times a year. And always with a new song. So that was all the excitement. I have many admirers, if that's what you mean. Yes. Daring or elegant? <clears throat> the picture on the wall is quite daring. Only if you knew how old I was at the time. I think I'm on a slippery slope here. Come on, don't be shy. Ask me. All right. How old were you? <laughs> Did you really believe I'd tell you? You're quite a player, aren't you? 
Life is anything but a game, detective. Well, you tell me. <clears throat> Do you think one of your admirers might be behind the threats? Those who admire me usually idolize me. No, I don't think it's one of them. You know, the soul of an animal is extremely complicated. Sometimes all it takes is a bad look or some small rejection to turn admiration into hate. That's a stillborn theory. No one hates me if they once loved me, Mr. Detective. Ah, I see. Why Deborah? Okay. She's a nice girl, but why didn't you come to me? Didn't you ask her the same thing already? I did, but I like to hear it from all sides. Hmm, well, since this whole thing started, I admit I'm not too keen on leaving my home. When I do, it's only with an escort. Ibn Wessler has nothing to do with this? Ibn has everything to do with me. Almost everything. <laughs> but I didn't want to upset him with this. He thinks I'm overreacting. Deep behind the diamond skin <clears throat> lies the truth. It doesn't matter how hard Natasha's trying to hide it. She's scared. Now I must concentrate to finally find out what I want to know. I think I'm gonna choose this one. What was in those threats, exactly? The message itself is not a threat. It's just a word. But a word again and again is threatening. Exactly. So? You really don't have any idea which word could be used for a woman like me? I guess I do. Yes, I think I know what it could be. Whore. <clears throat> Cat got your tongue? Hmm. Am I right? You heard it. I said what you were thinking. And yes, that was in the message. That was printed on the paper and painted on my wall in giant red letters. Well, thank you for your honesty. Ask about Filma. <laughs> Let me ask about the relationship. I think it is about Filma. <clears throat> I don't think it's the top two. What about Filma? Is he here because of you? Mr. Lowe helped me before, and yes, he was the first I approached. You've managed to curb my enthusiasm a little. Doesn't keeping two irons in the fire give me a better chance? But you don't have to worry. He didn't find anything. And he's not interested anymore, no matter how much I offer to pay him. Why? You'll have to ask him. I think I'll do that. Okay. to know that? Usually, yes. But I've got nothing to go on. And you don't have a hunch. Maybe I do. But first, I want to know if you'll even accept my case. I'm here, aren't I? Mm -hmm. That's true, but I must know if I can trust you. 
The proof of the pudding is in the eating. I wish it was that simple. Natasha is a mysterious woman, but I must gouge out at least one of her secrets. Enough games. It's time to know why I'm here. All right. <clears throat> Let's stop beating about the bush. How do you know Molly? I'm prepared for that question, but it's still not easy. You knew very well that if you threw in the name of my wife, I'd come to you no matter how vague and suspicious the case was. I just want to know if you're simply a manipulator or you're really that desperate. I really know her. I'm not lying. Oh, really? How? Were you a nurse, too? Forgive me, but I don't think so. Don't be rude and so cynical, Sonny. I'm sorry, but that's me when feline claws are at my throat. Molly is an old and good friend of mine. She has nothing to do with this, but I knew that if I didn't mention it to you, you wouldn't have come. Yeah, Natasha, you're right there. I knew you were a decent fowl, that you would help me. That's what you're famous for. Don't go there. Flattery doesn't work. Look, forgive me. I shouldn't have brought your wife into this. You're right, you shouldn't have. But to be honest, I don't think she's my wife anymore. On paper she is, but I haven't seen her in years. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Really? I did. I knew <laughs> I checked I didn't you out know. before really? I sent uh, I did. Luck me. This case is getting more and more intriguing. I don't know if we're doing so well on the detective meter here. What exactly do you want from me? You are really as good as they say you are. And I'm not selling lucky dips, Sonny. Find them, whoever they are, and... Whatever it takes. Not exactly, but something like that. You know, if I didn't see the speck of fear behind the confidence shining in your eyes, I wouldn't take the case. I'm not afraid. You're terrified, Natasha. Don't be ashamed. You must solve this. As soon as you can. Money's not an issue. Oh. <clears throat> that, that one wasn't so good. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Just one more thing, Sonny. Natasha? Please, come to 37 Rochester Street in Flower Town tonight. I'd like to show you something that could be of a great help in your investigation. I was afraid this was coming. Why there? Why not here and now? It's something I keep hidden there. I won't take the risk of Ibn or one of his men seeing it. Isn't Ibn too dangerous to keep secrets from? Sonny, a woman is naked without her secrets. Hmm. I knew you would understand. Oh yeah, I understand everything. So, when do we meet? The night is almost over. I'll be there in an hour. Don't be early, and don't be too late. Look, Natasha, you know... Please, this is very important to me. Sure, I get it. I'll be there. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I missed the Roost Chester Until Street. Until later, <laughs> Natasha. Goodbye, Sonny. Do you have a light, Natasha? I'm sorry. I've never smoked. Really? That's very uncommon in your line of work. It was uncommon in all my previous lines of work, too. But I promise that next time we meet, I'll bring you a box of matches. <laughs> I might take you up on that. <laughs> no trouble at all. Why did you name it the Czar Club when you took over? It was the millions before. Maybe you can guess my origins from my name and my accent. I come from the Eastern Tsardom of Slavonia. We are quite respectful of our leaders. You feel that's not the case here in Clawville? 
Here, no. Absolutely <laughs> not, Mr. Featherland. Many here don't even know the name of their king. To them, he's only the Fox King. It's quite disrespectful and rude. There's some truth to that. Where I'm from, we choose our leaders ourselves. And whatever they do later, we proudly stand by our decision. So that's why the name, in respect to your country. <sighs> Don't take me for so sentimental. It's only partly the reason. We lived there until I was 14. Then we, we had to flee. It doesn't matter why. In the end, I was the only one who made it to Clawville. So the name isn't because of nostalgia or respect. More like a reminder. So, why, Deborah? I could not seek you out in person. It was risky even to send Debbie. It's too late now. Mr. Wessler is aware of my little investigation. I'm sorry I got her mixed up in this. She's a lovely girl. She looked like one. May I be brash? It's New Year's Eve. Everything goes tonight. Ibn, do you love him? In my own way? Yes, I do. Whatever that means. You can't understand <laughs> this, Sonny. There are women who can't actually love. Not like they're supposed to. But that doesn't mean they don't love however they can. That's not a real answer, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> if you only accept yes or no, then yes, I love him. So this message... I'm sorry I had to upset you, Sonny. But if I didn't take that step, would we be talking here right now? Well, probably I'd be dead drunk and counting sheepmen in my dreams. I'm good sheep for men. you, you see? Yeah. You're a real angel. Why just me? What's wrong with my partner? Nothing in the world. I just like to be discreet. I wanted to talk to you in private because of uh, Molly. Yeah, pretty much, Uncle. Uh, well, uh, Even to the thank you the for your thing. discretion. It, uh, it means a lot. Don't mention it. So, who's this Olivia bird? I know well what you're curious about. You want to know if she's sleeping with Ibn. The thought may have crossed my mind. You men. But guess what? Maybe she does. You don't care? As long as he loves me, I don't. Well, that's your business. What do you know about her? She's not the one threatening me. You can be sure of that. I know that was your next thought. The lovesick assistant is jealous of the boss's girlfriend and wants to flick her out of the picture. It would even stand up, but Olivia doesn't have feelings. If she let Ibn sleep with her, it's because she does what he says, nothing more. That was so honest and raw, I'm inclined to believe it. <laughs> okay, done. Do you have a light, Natasha? Yep, we're done. Bye-bye. Well? Weren't you supposed to be waiting in the car? I was bored to tears, Sonny. I also thought maybe something happened to you. You thought Natasha had eaten me alive, huh? Well, who knows? You're such a fragile little thing. I'm too old for this, Marty. Then next time, leave the dangerous predators to me. I didn't mean that, Marty. I meant you. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, pal. My name is Santino Featherland. Eh? Gabriel, what do you want? Chickens. Do you happen to know where Mr. Wessler went? Do you take me for a fool? Get out of here while I'm in a good mood, birds. Okay. Thanks, big boy. What's his problem? Bit of a jerk. What a lovely kitten. Listen, pal. Uh, maybe if. Uh... Did I stutter, chicken? Get lost. <laughs> Did I stutter? 
<laughs> Love it. Isn't that Filmar standing over there at the bar? Huh, you're right. That time to say hi. So, have you talked to Natasha? Mm -hmm. In fact, yes. She was, uh, kind of mysterious. I bet she was. You know, I've never abandoned a case before. Not voluntarily, anyway. But that woman... You're, uh, too old for this shit, huh? <laughs> As you say, pal. That's exactly how I felt, too. Before you leave, take this and examine it closely. What is it? The reason I've decided all of this is not worth it for me. Wow, what that sounds encouraging. Take care of yourselves, guys. This case, maybe it goes deeper than you'd think. Oh, that makes my feathers all right, stand Sebra, on Good end. luck, dude. Ah, old croakers. <laughs> See you later, man. You're safe while I'm here. <laughs> okay, okay, I didn't say anything. Now what was in what would we what we pick up? We got a key? Hmm. Hmm. Come to daddy, darling. We stepped into it, didn't we? What are these names we and numbers? We stepped into it, didn't we? <clears throat> when did we get the key? Hey, is that the key for our, um, of all our cupboard? Of furry. What kind of a list is this? Exactly. I have no idea, but I don't even want to find out. Those names, all top dogs. Maybe they play cards together. Sure, that's very likely. Anyway, I pried this list out of a dead man's hand. Somebody dropped him outside the forest, a few miles from the Wessler residence. I should have known she was keeping secrets. Keeping secrets? She's the secret herself. Thanks, Filmar. This could be important. Ah, uh, don't thank me. Maybe I've just signed your death warrant. Oh, thank you, sir. Ah, oh, shut up, Marty. <laughs> shut up, Marty. Colin Boo's darling. <clears throat> it's kind of weird, don't you think? Says someone who calls his gun collection his harem. Touche. I'll shut it. Good birdie. Take care of yourself. Or... <laughs> the truth is, Ibn's a dirty bastard. But he's likable. It must be his charisma that snared Natasha. Maybe there's more to it than simple wild love. Hmm, who knows? Animals commit the dirtiest of deeds for wild love. Hmm, you've got a point. We stepped into it, didn't we? That's an understatement. All of these names? Belong to the upper crust. Yeah, I noticed. It's only some sex cult, if you're lucky. Hmm. <laughs> Don't even go there, Marty. Yeah, all right. Wonderful girl. Either I'm gonna kill her or I'm beginning to like her. That's funny, I swear I've heard that before. Huh, to be honest, me too. So, Natasha invited us to her weekend house. That's either very good news or very bad news. 50%. That's not that bad, is it? That's an admirable attitude. Attitude, yeah, he's got that. Most of the time, I think that's 50 -50. all he's got. Hey! Who is this woman, anyway? She's like Ibn Shadow. Nobody knows anything about her. I don't know if she has anything to do with the case, but it's worth keeping an eye on her anyway. Mm, more women, more trouble. You already fantasizing. <sighs> Even the sight of young women make me tired. Anyway, most people <laughs> say she's the rat's lover too. But next to Natasha, All right, I doubt you want her. Thanks for hanging out, anyway, dude. Anyway, the pussycat would have already torn her to shreds. See you tomorrow. Could be. Take care of yourself, old bird. <laughs> yeah, take some clues. I unlocked a lot of peoples. Another place. 
Kydex looks good. Living legend, living legend. Decent cop. Hey, we've ranked up to new guy. It's better than Greenhorn. 